Hello YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to neutralize various reagents all at the same time. Today I made copper chloride, copper sulfate, copper tetrachloride, and an excess of hydrochloric acid, and I need to neutralize all of those at once. On the screen you'll see that there are the equations, and I'm using sodium bicarb to do this. Now, for those of you who don't know, sodium bicarb is just commonly found as baking soda. Uh, make sure that when you're purchasing this, you buy unscented baking soda as any odorants or aromatic compounds that may be in this will or may react with your chemicals in, well, the way we don't want them to. So what I'm doing now is I'm just adding in a small amount just to show you that the reaction is proceeding and I need to make sure that it's a very controlled amount. Because I added too much uh, baking soda, it bubbled up way too quickly and it actually spat some of the excess out. The entire procedure of this is played by ear depending on the container and the amount of acid or substance that you're wanting to neutralize. But for me, it was just a few taps and then I let it settle. Later on I'll switch to a spoon to show you that well you have to actually start stirring down the carbon dioxide bubbles. Now the interesting thing about this equation is, I'll bring it up again, is that all of the products from this, re this reaction are going to simply become carbon dioxide, sodium chloride, and then copper carbonate. So I'm actually making a whole bunch of copper carbonate and salt. And that's a very interesting reaction considering the fact that I ended up having a green solution, a yellow solution, and a blue solution, and just mixing in a white powder. It, it's a very beautiful sort of copper chemistry and stuff that I actually plan to explore later on this month. Now, it is absolutely imperative that while you do this you have to stir slowly and slowly and slowly and get all those bubbles down. Another very important thing to note is that the entire reaction is quite endothermic, meaning that the glass and the entire solution becomes very cold. So I would suggest not doing this in a metal container as it may stick to your hands, hurt your skin, minor abrasion. Quite frankly, it's a very interesting reaction just based on the color change, but the fact that it's endothermic is also very interesting too. Now for time sensitive uh, matters, I've actually sped up the video quite a bit because there is a lot of bubbles and a lot of shaking and stirring that needs to be done on the solution. This is just for demonstration purposes. Baking soda, as long as it is not uh, the scented kind, is one of the best neutralizing agents that you can use in the laboratory, especially the home laboratory. If I was working in a high-grade laboratory, I'd probably neutralize the acid with a different base, but this is very cheap, just again. One final time, I will make mention that you must buy unscented sodium bicarb. Sodium bicarb can be purchased from many places. I happen to buy mine from, I think, a grocery store around here. The entire box was less than $10. Very, very inexpensive. Very, very handy. It neutralizes not only acids, but bases as well. The observant of you may have seen that while I was stirring the solution in the mason jar, I had a small green layer at the bottom of the jar that when I stirred the reaction, that disappeared almost entirely all at once. That was because the sodium bicarb actually created a physical barrier so that it could only react with a small amount of HCl. So to fix this problem, I actually stirred it, but because I stirred it, it started to bubble and hiss and foam really rapidly. It actually got out of control at one point. That's why I switched to this big bowl. The bowl is there to show you that the larger surface area of diffusion will allow the carbon dioxide gas to bubble off without actually rising up like it did in the mason jar. Now, what you're seeing here is an excess of sodium bicarb being added just to ensure that any HCl would be reacted. Now, I went ahead and let this solution dry overnight and I filtered it. After filtration, I ended up with quite a bit of copper carbonate and I performed a few washings to ensure that the copper carbonate was clear of any excess sodium bicarb or salt. 
Thank you for watching, I hope this video was informative and not only helps you in the home laboratory, but is just a really neat reaction to watch. Thanks for watching.